all right everybody i'm back with another video but before i start the teaching in this video i gotta tell you you gotta repent you gotta turn to jesus christ you gotta turn away from your lifestyle of sins we all gotta turn to the lord because we never know when we're gonna take our last breath and we never know when jesus is gonna come in them clouds in the sky so i just gotta put that out there so i let you know in case you don't make it to the end of this video I want you to know that you got to turn away from sin, turn away from your lifestyle that's contrary to God's will, and you got to turn to Jesus Christ. All right. Now, let's go ahead and get started with this video. As you can see by the title, we, we're going to talk about him which is, which was, and is to come. Now, some might say, well, the father, that's the father there. But then the scriptures show how the father said it. And it also show how Jesus Christ, his son, said it. So the one is believed to say, well, ain't no two coming. You only got one coming. So therefore, that got to be God the Father. That's him in a dual nature. At one moment, he's speaking as the son. One moment, he's speaking as the father. But yet, ain't no two is only one. So therefore, I want to go to the scripture and I want to see the scriptures that talk about it because we need to come to an understanding according to the word of God. Because this is what matters. This is what matters. I care about what this say, not what man's mouth say. So therefore, let's go ahead and get started. Now we're going to go to Revelation 1. And we're going to get first where God the Father said it. So now Revelation 1, let's look at um, verse 4 through 5. John, to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you and peace from him now pay attention from him which is and which was and which is to come so we talking about him which is which was and which is to come let me tell you in case you don't know that statement simply means always was currently is and um and always will be so he um let's see let me go to it he which is because he currently is. He's currently, he's present. So just look at it like this, past, present, future. Which is present. Which was past and which is to come future. So God is all that. He always been in existence. He is, he was, he is, and he is to come. Now, let's get to where the son of God said it. All right, well, let's get to what Jesus Christ, the Son of God, said it. Look look at verse 8. It says, uh, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. Now, if you got a red letter Bible, the one with the red letters of Jesus, you will see that that's in red letters. But in case you don't believe the red letters belong to Jesus, let's get it in scriptural context. Let's go back to verse 4. Let's read to verse 8 so we can see who is that talking about. Starting in verse 4. John, to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you and peace from him which is and which was and which is to come and from the seven spirits which are before his throne. So this lets you know that we are talking about God the Father here because we're talking about the seven spirits which are before his throne. His throne is referring to God's throne, the Father's throne. And I can show you how in Revelation 4, 5 and Revelation 5, 6 that those are the spirits of God. But let's look at those real quick. Revelation 4, 5 says, And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices, and there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. If you go up to verse 2, it lets you know that uh, the throne was set in heaven and one sat on the throne. So we talking about on God the Father's throne. Let's look at Revelation 5, 6. It says, And I beheld and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. So this lamb, the Bible tells us, is um, it has the seven spirits of God. And look at Revelation 3, 1. It says, and unto the angel of the church in Sardis write, 
These things said he that hath the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. So we know that the one that has the seven spirits is Jesus Christ. That's the son of God right there. He have those seven spirits of God. So when I brought that out to let you know that when we go back to Revelation 1, 4, we talking about the one which is, which was, and which is to come, and from the seven spirits which are before his throne. So before his throne, that means God the Father's throne. Now let's continue because we we trying to get an understanding in verse 8. Because this says the Lord which is, which was, and which is to come, the Almighty. So I'm trying to show you that this is referring to Jesus Christ, the Son of God. So now we read in verse 4 how the seven spirits which are before his throne, talking about God's throne, and it says, and, verse 5, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead. So notice who we're talking about. Jesus Christ, the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead. Meaning he's the first one to resurrect and stay alive. And the prince of the kings of the earth. Unto him that loved us and washed us in, from our sins in his own blood. Who did that? The son of God is the one who washed us from our sins in his own blood. Because he is the one that shed blood. All right. Like I show you how in Revelation 5, it tells us that he is the one that come by water and spirit. As a matter of fact, let's go to it real quick. Because I, I got to let you know everything. Um, 1 John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5, it says, look at verse 5. Who is he that overcome the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. This is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ. Not by water only, but by water and blood. All right? So I have to let you know that because I want to prove in Scripture who we talking about. So the one that washes from our sins in his own blood is Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Now let's go back to, um, let's go to verse 6. And had made us kings and priests unto God and his father. So notice how we talking about Jesus Christ. And then John go on to say, and had made us kings and priests unto God and his father. And his father. All right. We're talking about Jesus Christ, his father. So this I let you this lets you know we're still talking about Jesus Christ. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him. Now, I could go and show you how in Acts chapter 1, the one who the angel said left. Um, matter of fact, let's go to it real quick so that way I, I can uncover everything. I can show you everything. That way I'm not leaving you um, in doubt. That way you will know. Now, let's look at Acts chapter 1 real quick because I got to show you the one that's coming in the clouds. Let's look at Acts chapter 1, and let's go over to uh, verse 10. It says, And while they looked steadfastly towards heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why standing ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken from you into heaven, shall come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. And so when you see him, um, he says, so he going to come in the same way he left. And then I got scripture to show you that he's coming in the clouds of heaven. All right, so now let me show you in Matthew 24 at verse number 30. I'm going to show you that he's coming in the clouds. All right. And then shall appear the sign of the son of man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the son of man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. So I just want to make that clear that he is the one that's coming in the clouds. Now let's go right back to Revelation chapter 1. So let's go back to verse 7. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him. So we the one that was pierced, that was the Son of God that was pierced. He the one that died. And all kindred of the earth shall well because of him, even so, amen. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. So now, and now, if you want to continue, let's continue, because I want you to see that this is the Son of God. I, John, which also am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and the patience of Jesus Christ, was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet, saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, 
what thou seest, write in the book, and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, and to Smyrna, and unto Pergamos, and unto Thyatira, and unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. And now he's finna give a description of who said that, who just said they Alpha and Omega. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girded about the path with a golden gurgle, his head girdle. His head and his hands were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace. All right, uh, and his voice as the voice of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword. If you go to Revelation 19, it'll show you that the one that's called his name, that's the word of God, out of his mouth proceeded a sharp two-edged sword. So right here, the same thing, when a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shining in his strength. And when I saw him, I fell as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying, unto me fear not i am the first and the last i am he that liveth and was dead and behold i am alive forevermore all right so that same one he said he was the one that lived and was dead and is alive forevermore so we understand that this is talking about jesus christ so jesus christ also said that he is he is uh the lord which is which was and which is to come once again which is that means he's present that means he's currently in existence, which was, that means he always was, and which is to come, meaning he always will be in, in the future. You know, he's always will be. Now, some people don't believe that God got a son. So therefore, let me prove with scripture that, um, that this son, he is, which is, which was, and which is to come as well as the father who which is which was and which is to come why they both can claim that title they both can say that they both can say they which is which was and which is to come and yet they're still the father and the son and they are distinct they not in the same body in the same flesh like the one is believers believe because jesus said himself in john 5 26 for as the, for as the father had life in himself even so had he given to the son to have life in himself so the son have his own life and the son and the father have his own life. Regardless of people want to believe it or not, let God be true and every man a liar. Let God be true and everyone is believer a liar. You are a liar. And, and, and like I said, matter of fact, and if you think I'm lying, let me give you the words of what Jesus said here real fast. I want to give you Jesus um, or what John rather what he tells us about Jesus look at first John chapter 5 verse 20 and we know that the son of God has come and had given us an understanding that we may know him that is true and we are in him that is true even in his son Jesus Christ this is the true God and eternal life so the son of God has come and given us an understanding all right so I don't care what no man say I believe what the son of God taught I believe what he taught. All right. So now let's go ahead and continue because let me show you real quick. I'm going to show you two instances where the father, he lives forever because remember, we're talking about which is, which was, and which is to come. So that's Deuteronomy 32, 40. And it says, for I lift up my hand to heaven and say, I live forever. All right. So God, the father says he lives forever. Then we can go over um, to Psalms chapter 90. Psalms chapter 90, let's go to uh, verse number 2. Psalms 90 and at verse 2. And the scripture says, well, let's start from one. Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever, thou hast formed the earth and the world even from everlasting to everlasting thou art God. So that just lets you know right there that God the Father is from everlasting to everlasting. He always will be. He is which was, which is, and which is to come. All right. So now let's get the Son of God now. Now, the Son of God, let's go to the book of John chapter 14 because I got to get you. I got to find the scriptures to show you that the son of God always was as well. So he can claim the same title, which is, which was, and which is to come. All right. So let's look at uh, John 17. Let's look at verse five. Jesus will start at verse three. And this, this is Jesus praying to the father. And this is life 
eternal, that they may know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gave me to do. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. So Jesus saying to the Father that he had glory with him before the world was. Let's go down to verse 24. Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory which thou hast given me for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. So before the foundation of the world, Jesus says that he had glory with the Father. Now, when we go over to, um, let's see here, Ephesians 3, 9. Let's go to Ephesians 3, 9. So how is it that the Son say he had glory with the Father before the foundation of the world? Well, let's let the Bible talk. I'd rather that talk than me. So let's go to Ephesians 3, 9. And the scripture says, uh, hold on, the wrong one. Okay, Ephesians 3, 9. The scripture says, and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning, which from the beginning of the world had been hid in God. This is the mystery that from the beginning of the world been hid in God who created all things by Jesus Christ. So that's how Jesus Christ was in the beginning because in the beginning, God created all things by Jesus Christ. Now you may say, well, Jesus Christ is the flesh that came, the flesh that was born. Jesus Christ is the word that was made flesh. See, that's the problem. People only associate Jesus Christ with being the flesh. They always say that flesh, that flesh, because they get that stuff from these oneness preachers that say that flesh, that flesh is the son. No, Jesus Christ is the word that was made flesh. The word, matter of fact, let's go to it. Let's go to John chapter one. Go to John chapter one because Jesus Christ is not that flesh. Okay, that flesh. No, Jesus Christ is the word that was made flesh. Now, let's go to John 1, 14. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Go down to verse 18. No man had seen God at any time. The only begotten son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he had declared him. So, um, and then look at verse number 17. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. So now Jesus Christ is the word that was made flesh. That's how God created all things by Jesus Christ, because God created all things by his word. Remember in Genesis 1 that God spoke and things came into existence. He said, let there be light. That word that God used was Jesus Christ. That was the word right there. That word was made flesh and that word inherited the name of the father. And that's the anointed one that all the prophets had prophesied would come into this world. Remember Isaiah 9, 6, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. Yeah, that son given, that's the one that John 3, 16 says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. His only begotten son is the word that was made flesh. And that word that was made flesh is Jesus Christ, the one that was the child that was born. The child that was born is the one that was born from Mary. Jesus called Christ. Read Matthew 1, 16. And if you need me to read it, I'll read it for you. Matthew 1, 16. And Jacob begat Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus, who is called Christ. So Jesus called Christ is the one that was born from Mary. And that's the child that is given. And yes, that child was given a name above every name that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow his name. The scripture says shall be called everlasting father, the prince of peace. Um, um, what else he said in Isaiah nine, six, it says that he should be called. Uh, let me, in fact, let me go to it real quick. Isaiah nine, six is right here. I'm already there. It says, um, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. I agree in thee, because he inherited all from his father. All right. So now, um, 
Let me get you one more real quick. Let me get you one more in the book of, uh, let's go to Micah real quick. Micah, the book of Micah chapter five, because I, I want to show you how the son, he's from everlasting. So he can say the same thing as the father, which was, which is, and which is to come. Micah five, verse two. But thou, Bethlehem Ephrata, um, though thou be little as the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall come forth unto me, that is to be ruler in Israel, whose going forth have been from old, from everlasting. So that one that was going to come out of Judah, we can go to uh, uh, Hebrews 7, it tells us that our Lord sprang out of Judah. So that one out of Judah was well, going to be one who's going forth have been from old from everlasting why because the word in the beginning john 1 1 in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god and the same was in the beginning with god all right and with matter of fact let's go to it real quick real quick john 1 1 uh, through 3 in the beginning was the word so in the beginning in the very beginning was the word right because in the beginning was god and god spoke in the beginning and so the the speech that proceeded forth and came out of god's mouth that's the word and so that word was in the beginning in the beginning was the word and the word was with god that word was with god so jesus christ the one the word that was made flesh he was with god why because he is the word of god and that word was made flesh. So in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. That word was God. Why? Because that word came out of God. Jesus himself said that I proceeded forth and came out of God. So he said he came out of God. The word came out of God. And that word is Jesus Christ. I thank God for this understanding. Thank you, Heavenly Father. And I thank you, Lord Jesus, for giving me an understanding. Because this gospel here, this message is hid. It's hid to all the one that's believing. Because they don't believe that God got a son. They believe the son is just flesh. The flesh suit. Now, I, 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 you are wrong. You are wrong. You are wrong. All right. The son of God is the word that was made flesh. God's word was made flesh. Look at verse three. All things were made by him and without him, not anything made that was made. Everything was made by the word of God. The word of God is the word that was made flesh. So, yeah, the son of God say, can say he is the one that which is, which was and which is to come. Now, I could show you even in resurrection that the son of god is still coming i mean for y'all who follow me know y'all know this scripture in 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 first thessalonians 1 uh in first thessalonians 1 9 and 10. hold on let me just go to it for those who never uh watched me before because some never watched me let's see who is the bible says is going to come even in this resurrection now remember which uh which was which is and which is to come means past present future all right that means everlasting always was currently is and always will be there always will be the father the and his son regardless of those who want to believe it or not it don't matter let god be true and every man a liar all right so um first that's only one nine or ten for they themselves show of us what manner of entering in we had unto you and how ye turned to god you turned to god from idols to serve the living and true god and to wait for his son from heaven whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. So the one that is coming in the resurrection is God's son, whether you want to believe it or not. I don't care, and I'm sure God don't care what you believe. Now, and for those, and then for when God the Father said, he is to come. Remember, that means past, present, future. But I can even show you how Jesus Christ is coming in the glory of the Father. And you got to remember, too, that the Bible says that the fullness of the Godhead dwells in him bodily. You got to remember that the Bible said for God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. And you got to remember that John 17 tells us that 
the Father is in the Son, and the Son is in the Father. Look at John 17, 21. But first, let's look at Matthew 16, 27. Let me show you. It says, For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels. All right? Now, let's go to John real quick, 17, 21, because I want to show you. Um, let me show you how the Father is in the Son. So even in the resurrection, the father is coming back and the son is coming back. John 17, verse 21. It says that they all may be one as thou father art in me and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. So yes, the father can say he is to come. The, the son can say he is to come because they are coming back in the resurrection but they always will be which is a future thing which is everlasting all right that's everlasting so that's past present future thou which was which is which is to come that means he in the past he's present and he's in the future he's from everlasting to everlasting that's the father and his son the word <music>